Nothing is ever going to replace physical models. A physical model is the first construction that you make of your project. Also, it is the opportunity of the architect to construct and build in physical space their architectural idea. What we usually do is just draw and pass those drawings onto people who can interpret them and build space. But with a physical model, you as an architect are actually constructing your own space. You are the ideator and builder of your architecture. And that process will never be replaced by 3D modeling, which would be the digital equivalent of physical models. So if you are thinking of creating digitally fabricated pseudo physical models instead of creating the actual physical model, well, don't because you are just cheating yourself. There's nothing like folding pieces of carton, then making a cube out of them, and then puncturing those walls and letting light in, and then you put your eye through one of those orifices and try to experience what kind of space you are creating. Joanny Palasma says, Computer imaging tends to flatten our magnificent, multi-sensory, simultaneous, and synchronic capacities of imagination by turning the design process into a passive visual manipulation, a retinal journey. Having that in mind, we also need to understand the importance of a conceptualized physical model of our project, even if it is digital. Seeing pictures of physical models lets us understand space, light, and materiality in a way that renders can't. A render is closer to a photograph of a building and a physical model is closer to walking through the building, feeling the building. Also, there is a sense of scale that is experienced through physical models that other types of representation just can't replicate. Or haven't you wondered this constant phenomena in architecture to take pictures of the models with a person or a hand in the frame? It can work to give a sense of human decision on a space, a sense of scale, an action, or in some cases, just to show an architect as a kind of god looking down at their models, at their creations. What is this? So you may ask, Stephen, if you like making models so much, why are you creating a tutorial on digital versions of those physical models? It turns out that, first of all, having lived through a situation of a pandemic, we have realized how architectural education has turned into a constant visual presentation on Zoom, on Google Meet, on all of these platforms. And second of all, the effect of seeing a picture of a physical model is still somewhat useful in a design process and can't be replaced with renders. Inside of your presentation, you can have diagrams, plans, and renders, but adding an image of a physical model can really help you and others understand the spatial qualities of your project. Plus, there are so many ways you can create a digitally rendered physical model. So playing with the array of options lets you understand under what light or aesthetic your project fits best. After having all of that said, I want to show you how I created these images using V-Ray and what I learned. Also, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but more on that later. Let's talk about the project. The project I will be using as an example is the Modern Art Museum in Medellin, Colombia by Control G Architects and 51 to 1 Architects. This project was completed in 2015 and it is a reinterpretation of the periphery and favelas of Medellin that pile on top of each other, creating rich spatial relations and opportunity for informal growth. I have always liked this project because it represents a constant reality here in Colombia, where I live, and also because it is just so well done. Now the 3D model. Due to the structural simplicity of the project, the 3D model is not that complex to make. The museum is built in five levels. Besides new art galleries, it hosts laboratories, storage, offices, shops, cafes, and a theater. These areas need to be closed, hermetic, and with special light and geometric conditions. They are like boxes. Each one closed by prefabricated concrete panels, which are pierced, cut, and carved to reveal different color, light, and textures. 11 boxes of different sizes and heights rotate and pile on top of each other in a careful and strategic placement. Scene setup. To set up the scene, I created a big, simple plane that will simulate the table on which the model is being put on. Also, I created a vertical rectangular plane 
that was going to receive the shadows and light serve as a backdrop for our model. Since this model only had the building, I didn't place anything else underneath or add any extra element. 3D people. Search in the Google 3D warehouse for 3D people. I downloaded some and spread them over the surrounding. Light. I used a rectangular light from V-Ray and it's set in different directions to test out which one looked best. The important thing is to make sure it is facing the right direction, adjust the intensity so your image doesn't overexpose or underexpose. You also want to make sure the rectangular light is your only light on, so you, have, you better make sure you turn off default sunlight and put it to zero. The bigger your light is, the softer your shadows are going to be. You don't want your image to look flat, so you may want to change the angle and the height of, a of the light a few times to test out which one looks best. This may be one of the most important steps, but of course it depends on the kind of material you want to use. Instead of changing the materials one by one on the original model, we are going to use the material override option. This will change all of your materials to the same texture at once. Now, if you want a specific mapping or a texture that has to be applied specifically to a surface, then you might want to use the normal way to paint materials, Otherwise, you're good. Turn on the material option and select your desired material. In my case, it is a wood that already comes in the material library of V-Ray. Since I don't want the background to be in this material, I go to the specific material I applied to the background and I take off the option that it can be overridden. This will make that material visible in your final render. You also want to increase the size of your material. Take into account that we are trying to represent a small scale model where the wood textures or concrete textures would be very, very visible. So you want to make these textures very big. Depth of field. Before you click on render, you want to turn the depth of field option on. Then select the point of focus of the camera. You can use the V-Ray interactive option to see how much focus or defocus your render is getting and adjust it accordingly. Point of view. You want to choose a point of view that would be a logic that would be logical when taking a picture of a model. Also a field of view that matches it. For example, I decided to select aerial points of view since it's from the perspective of a person that is standing and looking down at the model. You can also take pictures from a pedestrian point of view. Just take into account to increase the depth of field so you can notice that the camera is struggling to keep everything in focus. Render. Finally, you can hit the render button. I would suggest first creating 10 to 15 test renders of a small quality and size around 400 pixels wide to see which ones you like best. After this, save your scenes and render in maximum quality and resolutions to your final renders. While the render is taking place, you can adjust the post-production values in the same window, adjust the exposure if it's too dark, adjust the shadow colors, the color balance, etc., and all the other small details. So these are the results of some of the renders I took out from the same model. As you can see, there are a ton of ways of representing the same project. It's so crazy. I really like the results. Also, I only played around with one material, but changing materials and changing the backdrop materials, the background materials, also change the mood and change the whole setting of the image. Now, as you can see, rendering a digital maquette has a lot to do with actual photography. And of course, if you learn the technicalities of photography, you can translate this knowledge onto V-Ray and eventually have better render. That is why I recommend taking the class Photo Editing, Cinematic Styles in Adobe Camera Raw by professional photographer Elizabeth Weinberg. Here you can learn all the details of post-production editing that can also be applied to your renders in a very concise and professional manner. And I want to talk about today's sponsor. Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. You can learn literally anything in Skillshare from illustration, graphic design, animation, all over to productivity hacks and photography. And it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. So I hope you guys really like this video. 
I enjoyed so much making it. I enjoyed so much making all of these images, all of these uh, digital physical maquettes. And I would love to see what you think if you have, if you're really creating one right now for your projects and show me through your Instagram page, DM me through Instagram. And thank you for watching this video. If you wanna see more videos like these, please like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos. I will see you in a next one. Bye. Digital physical maquettes. Digital physical maquette. Digital physical maquette.